Hi, I'm Carol Willis. I'm the founder and director of the Skyscraper Museum, and I welcome you all tonight and thank Steelcase profusely, especially Jeannie Bochette, for offering us this spectacular space in which, in Midtown, to hold a program called uh, Super Slender Midtown Towers. So this, our current exhibition on vertical cities, looks at Hong Kong, uh, which you see here in the mid-levels, the the, the high-priced residential housing, uh, the highest-priced uh, uh, apartments uh, in Hong Kong, just above Central. Whereas you can see the exploitation of the land and the value of the land results in an extraordinary verticality and a condensed kind of construction that um, is like really nowhere else in the world. This is the highest density housing. Uh, but it's a density uh, that, I a vertical density which correlates with affluence rather than the kind of density of congestion like one might find in Cairo or M Mumbai, horizontal cities, where, um, where the congestion is one of crowding and of poverty. Um, the, the congestion of Hong Kong uh, is, in con is um, extreme in its, its built environment in contrast to the open uh, uh, nat nature space of the country park laws that govern um, the colonial Hong Kong's overall master planning. So that the contrast of nature and built environment in Hong Kong is very extreme. Um, that was the nature of New York as well in the early 20th century, and it's one of the ideas that we explore in the exhibition. Uh, this, the commercial center in Lower Manhattan, when the tallest building there, the Equitable Building, was um, topped out at 40 stories and consumed every inch of the land uh, of its lot, as did most of the other early 20th century towers you see here, built over um, every available inch uh, of their site. Just as in Hong Kong today, even though it is somewhat constrained by zoning laws, you find this kind of entrepreneurial um, e exaggeration of the value of the land on the site. So looking out over Happy Valley and um, to, towards uh, the new towns. Uh, and you see in towers such as this, these pencil-thin towers, a kind of precedent for what we're going to, to look at tonight, uh, where the individual lot is exploited to um, extreme dimensions, where an FAR, a floor area ratio in Hong Kong, uh, of 18 to 1 is allowed. Uh, and you find at the high end, not just the speculative uh, apartment buildings like the ones that you, you saw on the last slide, but um, here in High, High Cliff uh, and the summit, uh, the most extreme example of residential slenderness uh, in the world, a slenderness ratio of 1 to 20 uh, in one of, the high, one of the most luxurious and high-priced uh, residential buildings in Hong Kong. Now, New York's history really is a commercial office building history where before zoning was passed in 1916, towers like this, which was, had the address 1 Wall Street, it's a building that's not remembered very much anymore, uh, but it stood right at the uh, corner of Broadway and Wall Street. It was the, the most costly or the highest priced land value conveyance uh, in, the, in the history of New York and therefore in the world uh, in 1905-6 when the previous short four-story building was torn down, and this one of 18 stories was erected on a 30-foot by 40-foot lot. That is a, a tradition that one finds in New York, whether it's the Gillander Building here at the corner of Wall and Nassau Street and Broad Street, which uh, was an 18-story building uh, developed in 1897 uh, and torn down in 1910, only some 13 years later, where the site assembly allar allowed for twice as large a lot, about three times as large, actually this is only 23 feet, um, like 785 8th, 8th Avenue, uh, and here's a 90-foot square lot and a 40-story building, so twice as tall. So really the dynamic, the evolution of New York in its slenderness of unconstrained building, no zoning laws that uh, until 1916 uh, that um, tell you what you're allowed to build on your, lo on your lot. You just develop it as high uh, as the economics uh, will allow, really the economics of elevatoring in this case. And then this tradition of very slender towers continues until 1916 zoning law is passed. And the last of, of the very slender buildings that was uh, planned before zoning was uh, 
this Bush Tower building on 42nd Street that uh, many of you know, uh, set against a ruler in order to emphasize this concept of slenderness. If this is one inch wide and a ruler 12 inches tall, the one to, to 12 ratio is what engineers, and we have some of the world's greatest engineers here tonight to talk about their buildings, uh, uh, a one to 12 ratio is what engineers consider extraordinarily slender, and they will illuminate that concept for you later. Uh, this, the slide that you'll see in a, in a moment is the 1916 zoning law that establishes the setback formula uh, and does place the first limits on what you can build in New York. Uh, well, I'll go forward quickly. So that this formula, um, this formula of the setback uh, is really designated or uh, as a template designed by the zoning law that you see here. So that kind of constraint is placed um, on New York buildings. Uh, just to, sh to uh, show you another view of High Cliff, the 1 to 20 ratio of slenderness, which is um, this tower, uh, very, very slender on its side. You're actually seeing it with a, a second building in the back just there. So thinking about this concept of slenderness, you find the relationship of New York and Hong Kong underscored by the idea of the value of the land being exploited, uh, the allowances in Hong Kong for a much higher ratio uh, of uh, plot to height, uh, but the demand for luxury split space that drives the economics of slenderness that we see in tonight's Midtown Towers. Uh, and the buildings that we'll be looking at are Sky House that you see here um, by FX File, developed by the Clara Group. Uh, and um, I'll introduce the team in a second. The One Madison, uh, One Madison Park Tower, just outside my kitchen window, as you see in two views and 785 8th Avenue. So what I'll do right now is we look up 785 and then we see the relationship to High Cliff um, in Hong Kong. What I'll do right now is to uh, introduce the first team, Sky House, and um, then they will present as a team for, for 15 minutes. Uh, each one of the three buildings in turn, and then we'll have a general discussion, a panel discussion from the chairs here, and questions from the audience if, if we have time. So um, that is the shape of the evening. Introduce to you now um, the team for Sky House, and let me recognize Bruce Fowle of FX Fowle, who's sitting here in the front, and I know can't stay with us for the evening, but he really is the designer of Sky House. But presenting for FX Fowle this evening uh, is Frank Lupo, uh, and uh, the developer uh, Veronica Hackett, Ronnie Hackett, will will speak first in order to talk about the logistics of site assembly and the overall um, developer's point of view. Um, and then the engineer, and then we have a, a change for this evening in the program that you saw earlier, Sylvian Marcus from WSP Cantor Sainik will discuss the structural engineering of the building. Uh, Ahmed Rahimian, who was uh, going to be with us according to our postcard in the evening, is on his way back from Dubai, and I'm sure that all the engineers and architects in the audience will uh, be uh, pleased to know that he's on, on a job uh, and that uh, Nikhil is still talking about their very tall tower, so as I'm sure it's reassuring to you all to think that some of these projects are actually still going forward. There are, there are commissions. Uh, 